defending the freedom that I believe every family should have in choosing whether or not their children attend school with face masks. My son is entering third grade, and his only normal school year has been kindergarten. My daughter is entering TK and doesn't remember what it was like before she had to wear a mask six to eight hours a day. I feel that every elected official making policy that affects our children has a responsibility to review actual science-based data. In reviewing over 50 studies conducted on thousands of children, I found that the evidence was consistent in documenting effects to children as a result of wearing face masks. The study showed two very important things. The face mask efficacy is highly disputed, but the adverse psychological, mental, and physical effects on children are not. In fact, they are overwhelmingly established and often overlooked by those advocating for mask mandates in schools. I can't imagine a parent out there, whether they agree with me or not, who hasn't noticed their children's behavior significantly changed by social distancing and remote learning and being required to wear masks for long periods of time. Some of the institutions that publish studies are Harvard University, National Institute of Health, American Academy of Pediatrics, National Center for Biotechnology Information, and the American Medical Association. The mental and psychological effects documented include depression, isolation, increased fatigue, lack of energy, general malaise, new fears, lack of ability to concentrate, and trouble sleeping. Among others, there was a study published by the CDC in June 2020 citing that face masks trap large amounts of carbon dioxide. And there is a direct correlation of this with many physical effects, including headaches, shortness of breath, dizziness, impaired consciousness, accelerated respiration, tightness in the chest, changes in the nervous system, and general body weakness. On the CDC website, data from 2019 and 2020 shows that the chance of a child dying from COVID-19 is 0.2%. The data shows that well over twice as many children during the same period died of influenza. Further, the chances of kids being drowned in car accidents and even suffocating were significantly more likely to cause death than COVID-19. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, suicide was the second leading cause of death for 10 to 14 year olds prior to the pandemic. The evidence speaks for itself. My eight year old son, who I had hoped would be here to speak to you as well, has spent the better part of his summer with friends and family in Washington State, Colorado, and Alaska. None of those states have COVID-19 restrictions to the extent that the county of Los Angeles has. Despite this, cases are higher in Los Angeles than these other areas of the country. No one questions why this is, and it's a very important question, because if you plan to mandate masks in my child's classroom, I want to know how this is truly keeping our kids and the people around them safe. Evidence shows that most other states have less extreme restrictions and lower COVID infection rates. Wow. It's clear that something's not working here, and our children's overall well-being should not be compromised as a result. Thank you.